next thing we're going to talk about is how do we add VST instruments? And so much like before, when we're in this media side panel, and if you don't remember how to get to there, this button right here, we can command option R or just click on this to show and hide it. Uh, we're gonna go to VST instruments. So let's go ahead and add pad shop. Just gonna drop it right there. That is one way we can add it. Another thing we could do is click the add channel or add a, add a track and we just go to instrument and we select whatever instrument we want. So I could add that this way as well. So let me unsolo that. In fact, let me mute these audios and uh, delete their audios because they are weird. Now, let's say we're using Pad Shop. You know, it's working. And a lot of these will automatically route to just work once you're highlighted. So if I'm highlighted on the pad shop, I can. And if I highlight analog lab, and I know for a fact that this sound is gonna be awful. So let me just go here to large studio. If I highlight analog lab, I get. nifty and let's go ahead and record some I'm gonna start with the piano you know what? I'll start with the pad shop let's have fun with this guy I've not used it before so if I want to record MIDI it's the same as audio just click on the record button down here so let's go ahead and record some audio um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record button Two. Let's do the same for the piano. Do something pretty similar. Now, once we've actually recorded some MIDI, if I were to double click on the pad shop, we get this whole other window and it's the editor for the MIDI. So if I zoom out, you can see all the little notes I played. And what I typically like to do, especially if I'm song building, is I go ahead and quantize these so they just fit on the grid. And so I'm gonna select a couple of these, hit Command A or Control A if you're on PC. And we have the grid mode, snap, I like that, uh, snap to grid. And it means it's gonna make the audio, the, the MIDI hits, latch onto whatever bars I set within the quantizing uh, subdivision. And so I typically like to do eighth note uh, just because I usually set up my tempos to feel that way. And if I hit the Q button, boom. If you noticed, look right here, you can see all the notes kind of shifting. So I'm gonna Command Z, I'm gonna hit Q, boom. They all kind of lock into place. So let me solo pad shop and let's hear how this sounds. And I'm gonna do the same for the analog lab. So I'm gonna solo this, grab a bunch of these, hit A and tap Q. Let's see how this turned out. Cool. Now something I really like to do is while I'm in this phase, if there's something I already know I wanna change, I go ahead and do it. So these notes are a little too staccato for me. So I'm gonna grab these, and if I grab multiple, I can edit multiple at once. So I'm gonna zoom in holding Command and kind of uh, using two fingers to scroll, like I'm trying to scroll up on a web page. I'm gonna grab these, 
And right now you see they're kind of locked into this whole grid thing. If I hold command, I get a really smooth uh, travel from this. So select one, if I back it up again, let's hear that again. That feels better to me. So I'm gonna do the same for these guys really quickly. Doesn't have to be crazy. And now I'm gonna hit play so you can hear both these keyboards together. Now, I'm not a pianist, so be easy on me. When I'm messing around with MIDI as well, what I like to do is when I kind of have the skeleton of what I want, I will close up the actual MIDI track to kind of surround the notes that I care about and want to use. So I'll do that for both of these, and there's a reason. And I got fancy at the end of that piano and started to do like a, a walk-up thing. I'm gonna delete those and keep the piano kind of boring as far as the performance. And if I do that, I get these two that can work together. Now, if you kind of zoom in here, I'm gonna go ahead and make the track bigger so it's easier to see. We have a few options, or right? whenever I highlight it, there's gonna be this square and this square. Now, if I touch this bottom square, you get this little dual arrow thing. And that lets you kind of drag and decide how much of the MIDI needs to matter at the moment. I'm trying to think of better words, but that's as, as good as I can put it. And this is second square. Now the second square gives you a little finger pointing, and it's cool because if I hold it down, you see that little dialog box comes up and it says repeat count. I can actually drag it to the right and double this. I can do it with both tracks, and I can even grab an entire section like this, and it will treat that as what I'm trying to do. And so boom, I actually quadrupled this. And so that's just some fun stuff you could do with the MIDI. That's how you record MIDI stuff. And you know, editing is pretty self-explanatory. You just pick a note, you drag it. Uh, like instance right here, there's a, a note that's different. And on the piano I played. And then with the pad shop I went. And I went up to some higher notes. I actually prefer those notes. So let me go to the piano and I'm gonna edit this. Let's give that a listen. And you know, I, if I wanted to get fancy, I could even create harmonies and so Well, that's the cool stuff. So within this, we can actually still go in and add plugins to this audio. So if I wanted to put some delay on that piano, I would just go to delay and let's add just a mono delay. That's freaking cool. So I'm gonna keep that. I actually wasn't planning on that working out, but so got delay. We can add reverb, all that kind of stuff here. Uh, we could even send this uh, to an effects track, and we'll get to that in a later video. Um, but say that's it. I'm happy with that. If I were to right click these, I could go to render in place, and within this, there are a few settings we can mess around with too. Um, I like the reverb, and so I want to do. 
signal path instead of dry. If I if I didn't want to use any of the effects into that, I could just go dry. And then if I want to keep channel settings like group tracks, effect sends, all that stuff, then I would do this. Now, I'm actually going to go back on my word and do dry because I want to be able to actually mess around and readjust some of that stuff. So let's hit render. And here we are, we have the audio file right here. Now, if I go to the other page, we're gonna see that it went ahead and copied over the delay for us. And so if I hit play, and that delay is working, and I can, you know, add a reverb if I wanna make this more lush. And there you have it. That's uh, the very basics of messing around with MIDI and then getting it into audio format so you can treat it like anything else you would in an audio way. And so, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit subscribe, like, and uh, comment if you have any questions on anything you'd like me to go deeper into. Um, really excited to be using Cubase, it's a lot of fun, and there's a lot of videos on the way. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see y'all next time.